Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, How Do You Know When It's Time for a New HR Solution? I'm Laura Schroeder. I'm the head of brand at Personio, and I'll be your host today. We have a fantastic lineup of panelists today. I'll invite them to introduce themselves in just a moment, and then we'll jump right into our discussion and have some time for Q&A at the end to answer any additional questions you have. If during the panel you have questions that you'd like to ask, please enter them in the Q&A section um, at the bottom of your screen and we'll come back to them at the end. Okay, before we get into our discussion, I'll ask each panelist to give a brief introduction of themselves, their company, and any highlights about their HR journey that they would care to share. And I'll stop sharing my screen now so that you can see our panelists. Starting with Beata, please. Hello, hey, good morning, everyone. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. My name is Beata. I am the head of HR and corporate development at IC Berlin. Um, IC Berlin uh, is a Berlin-based company. We design, produce, and sell um, glasses, like sunglasses and prescription glasses, all over Europe and into the whole world. So we are quite an international company. We have 140 employees, and I, I'm part of uh, the IC Berlin family for four years now. Great, thank you. Um, and next, Lisa, would you please introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you. So hi, my name is Lisa. I'm head of HR at CrossCard. Originally, I'm from Austria, but I moved to Germany about six years ago. I worked in different industries from banking to mobile game development. And now with CrossCard, I'm in the fintech sector. Um, CrossCard has about 100 employees working in five different locations all across Europe. Um, we are a very international company. So we have currently about 30 different nationalities. And yeah, I'm very much looking forward to this great panel. Great, thank you. And Mila. Morning, everybody. It's a great pleasure for me to share this session with all of you. Um, this is Mila Cano, CHRO at ClickArts. ClickArts is the leader on online sales cars uh, in Spain. Um, we are based in Madrid. Uh, with more than 400 employees and our mission is make a uh, body in a car as easy and fun as driving it. Fantastic. Thank you all for, for sharing. Let's start off with a really easy, quick level setting question. I'd like to know how many times you've implemented an HR solution during your career and does anything stand out in your mind about that? Um, and let's just, for, for simplicity's sake, let's just go in the same order, starting with Beata. Uh, okay, um, I have been uh, implementing or part, being part of the implementation of two systems. Both were actually for IC Berlin, and uh, there's a huge difference in uh, implementing a HR system for the first time uh, in a company and um, then changing uh, an HR system after you have used already one. So that's, I think, and we're talk, we'll be talking about this later, but I think this is uh, one of the most uh, interesting challenges you can have uh, talking about an HR software. Great, thank you. Lisa, how about yourself? So I, I implemented about three different HR tools at the moment. And um, I did it for different sized companies. So from very small startups to big corporate organizations. And what I realized um, is that uh, there has been a lot of development in terms of the functionality of the tools and what they deliver. And um, yeah, it's a definitely a growing market. Great, thank you. And Mila. In my case, I have participated in the implementation of a system three times during my career. And I can say that in this case of Personio, it has been the fastest and most effective uh, time. I am sure that it is uh, for the support that uh, give up our PMO, Alba, thank you very much. And especially because it makes sure uh, she understands uh, our needs and helps 
in the definition of all the modules. And secondly, because the support she gives once launches is continuous and very fast. Thank you, Alba. <laughs> it's marvelous work with you. Oh, great, thank you. Um, what At what stage or when should a company start thinking about a new solution? Beata, you uh, mentioned that there's a big difference between first-time implementation and, and then a re-implementation. When is it time to start thinking about this? Uh, thinking about an HR software in general, I think you can think about this at any time. Because, <laughs> I mean, yes. you have kind of a system and processes in place before, which means usually, um, I may be wrong, but it's spreadsheets and some lists and some uh, physical copies somewhere in the uh, in the office and in the company. And then when you start uh, bringing everything together in a first system, um, this is uh, a huge step and um, you kind of only fulfill basic needs of your employees and the management and the HR team. When you do it for the second time and you change the system, it's it's different because you already have a system in place. It is probably kind of working, but you have to find out what's not working at the moment and where are the opportunities you're not taking chance of at the moment. So um, you think differently and also to explain it to a CEO and the CFO is different when you say, I have a system in place, I want a better one. Uh, then it, the discussion becomes a bit more difficult if you don't have the right arguments on your side. But I think we will also come to that later. There are good arguments for implementing or changing a software, even if you had one already in place. Great. It sounds like the, the second discussion is more around opportunity cost. Um, so I'm looking forward to digging into that a little bit more. <laughs> Lisa and Mila, do you have anything to add to that? Yes, um, if the company is planning a alleged growth, it should be considered from the beginning. Normally the decision is taken uh, when the model that uh, was being used is no longer adequate. Uh, by then the staff size is already too large and the flow configuration is complex. Um, the data quality is very low. In my opinion, the sooner the better. I, I agree with Mila. I think um, you basically can think about it from the start. And as you're setting up procedures and processes, you should already think about, okay, how can we display them? What, what do we want from the tool? And it makes our lives as HR people easier to then fit the tool that's fit for purpose and also maybe fit for the company culture. But I think we will also cover that later on. Great. Okay. Thank you. So let's um, let's talk about what was going on in your companies when um, you realized that it might be time for for a switch. Um, Lisa, starting with you, because Crosscard was has an interesting situation that it was founded as a spinoff of another company. Now, how did you first notice that um, the the solution that the parent company was using no longer meet, met the needs of Crosscard? Yeah, so maybe a bit of background about CrossCard. Um, it is a spin-off of, uh, of, of Pipro Group. So we carved out from that company in 2019. Uh, we downsized a bit from and started with roughly 40 employees. So when, when we became independent, we realized, okay, we're a pretty international company. Um, we are focused on the European market that all our locations are in Europe. Uh, and we need a tool that fits our company culture. We consider ourselves to be a young, dynamic fintech company. So we are tech driven. Uh, we are agile. We want something that's that that fits our needs and fits our purpose. And um, yeah, by the time we got rid of some old tools, so we had a, a flood of tools for each. Um, yeah, process, there was a different tool in place and we tried to fit all under one umbrella. And yeah, I have to thank our CEO, Kevin, who was very supportive and who was very fast in um, yeah, making the decision. So basically it took us about one week from saying, okay, we want to go with Personio. And then we signed the contract within a week's time. And yeah, by, back then it was just me who was driving the um, HR team and who was responsible for everything related to human resources. So 
yeah, very fast in making decisions and um, yeah, Personia was definitely the right tool for us. Great. Well, it sounds like you were the, the band leader on the decision. <laughs> Did you have any key arguments that you used that were particularly effective or was it just a, a no-brainer? It was a no-brainer. I mean, we needed something. We had we didn't have a recruitment tool at all. So there were emails floating around and um, yeah, Excel spreadsheets and email conversations and chats. So it was a complete mess. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you for sharing that. It is, I mean, clearly having the wrong solution in place um, can lead to in, inefficient processes and frustration, workarounds, not just for HR, but for, for any part of the business. Um, can you, uh, and actually I'll, I'll switch over to Beata now, can you describe a situation where you, you know, a concrete example where you realized that the solution you, you were using previously just wasn't working? What were some of the warning signs? I mean, I would say there was, uh, it was also a process to realize that the system we had in place wasn't the right one anymore, because, you know, um, um, if, if you see that you are doing again spreadsheets and you have to write emails or design processes that are only workarounds because the system doesn't fit your needs, then you definitely need to think about changing. And we had like several occasions. I mean, there was uh, the GDPR data security issue. There was uh, changes in, in laws. We couldn't fit with our old system. We had to uh, think about how do can we add another system? And as soon as you think, I need to add another system, then you, are, you should also consider maybe I'm not using the right main system anymore. So that was for us the point when we started to think about a solution for time tracking, an external solution, we thought, okay, maybe um, we should think about um, a general switch because it's not meeting our needs anymore. Yeah, that makes sense. If you have to do the work of an implementation anyway, maybe think a little bit bigger. <laughs> um, and Mila, do you want to add anything to that? Yes, for me, the main warning scene is when the employees don't use the tool. <laughs> this is the most clear. In our case, it uh, was because the tool uh, was very complex and don't support any value to the managers. Um, finally, nobody used it. <laughs> I guess that would be a sign. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's a very clear sign. <laughs> um, so when you reach that decision point, the signs are all there and you can't ignore them anymore. Um, how do you initiate the search for a new HR system? Who do you need to involve? Who do you collaborate with? Um, how do you make the case? It's a deliberately um, wide question, but you know mm -hmm. whatever your key insights from that experience are, I think will be helpful for our audience. Um, and Mila, why don't I start with you this time? Yes, uh, we start uh, with the proposal in, in nature. Then we involve to the founders and they understand very fast our needed. Um, finally, we involve to the um, steering committee uh, for use them as a sponsor and we then introduce uh, the IT department and the training business area uh, for our, uh, to do all better and cover all the needs in the company. I think that is very, very important to involve uh, the direction as a sponsor uh, for to be successful. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Um, and uh, Beata and Lisa, how, did you have similar processes or um, differences worth worth noting here? I would say, I mean, we are definitely smaller than uh, Klika, so we didn't have too many like official ways to go. Um, for me, it was just discussing with our upper management, so the CEO, and say, you know, I think it's time we we have grown up as a company, we have changed, so um, and we have different plans for the future. Let's, let's think about that, and so maybe a new HR solution could be part of the 
the future development of the company. So, and then um, going from, and I got a yes immediately. So that was easy. And um, then uh, going to discuss with uh, my team, but also with the management, with the employees, what would be like a perfect uh, addition to our to our actual system? And how could we um, make it better, make it more efficient? Uh, what would be great to add? So we, we I just had a long list of wishes in the beginning and um, started from that looking for a system and uh, looking for solutions that might work for us. Mm -hmm. Lisa, anything to add? I mean, for as I said, we were in the middle of a change process, so we were reviewing all our tools anyway, so mm -hmm. it was just the perfect timing. And um, for, for us, it was pretty straightforward. So I had this conversation with our CEO and we more or less agreed for a new tool or on a new tool within 10, 15 minutes. And then we took it from there. And of course, <laughs> we also had to involve our IT team um, for the technical setup. Right. Mm -hmm. That sounds just very smooth. <laughs> it was very smooth, very <laughs> straightforward. Uh, yes, if only all decisions were so smooth. Yeah. Straightforward. <laughs> Um, all right, well, now let's talk about the process of identifying the requirements of, of the new solution, uh, starting with Clee Cars, because you guys have more than tripled in size in, in just yes. the last year. So you're growing really fast, I can imagine. Yes. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, how, how has that affected and changed your, your requirements for an HR solution? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh... Certainly in, in, in ClickCars, uh, we, we have a uh, triple the staff in one year. The last 200 hires uh, have been in the past three months. Um, this imp implies a need uh, for agility in the recruitment, hiring, and managing people. Uh, we need a strong partner as Personio to reduce the administrative uh, workload. Uh, that don't add value to the HR department. Uh, with this billion, uh, we need help. <laughs> uh, it's very important, uh, the high level of customization offered by Personio. Um, basically, uh, we were looking for to eliminate inefficiencies and find a system that adapt to our way of working instead of us adapting to it because in my life's experience, uh, this is the tool and you have to change all the process to the new tool. And in, in the case of Personio, it's different. Uh, they first understand our needs and we can do the customization, uh, adapting uh, all the process that we have. Adaptability, yeah, I can, I can see that that may, might be key. If you're growing, you're probably also changing very fast. Yes, 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 very fast. Uh, for example, to have uh, the thing, uh, the digital thing for the contracts, um, the manage of the recruitment, linking with other uh, webs the, of recruitment, of help us a lot. I promise you. <laughs> yes, because finally we have all under control. Mm -hmm. uh, we we can now who think the contract who know the rest of policy about GDPR equity uh, the clock in clock out system because in Spain it's mandatory uh, to have the register of of the schedule of the employees well uh, for us uh, all my team is in love with Personio because now we can go more fast uh, giving value and um, about the administrative tax. Oh, well, that's, that is really great to hear. Thank you. Thank um, you, you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll pass that along to our product team. I'm sure they'll be very happy to hear that. Um, now, let's let's broaden the question a little bit for, for the other two panelists. Um, Beata, I want to come back to something you said a moment ago that I thought was interesting. You said you had this big list <laughs> big wish list. Maybe now um, we can focus on just some of the more crucial, the must-haves on that list, um, like customization or, or integrations, you know, whatever was crucial for your business. Maybe you could talk about those a little bit. 
Sure. I, I, I would have come to that point. I mean, as soon as you get a wish list from everyone, then you have to decide, okay, uh, what are the must-haves and what are the nice-to-haves? And um, I mean, of course, we, I think we all and every HR manager has must-haves, like, you know, you know, you need an employee's list, you need basic information, you want to add this and this. So for us, um, it, it's, uh, it's also especially the point customization and um, also the uh, the look into the future. So, what are future functions? Can we grow with a with a with the system? And can we can we develop? And do we get back best practices? Can we learn from the system? So, there's uh, several things I would say that are really nice to have, and that make make uh, the difference between different systems. And we found a lot of uh, things we would wish in the software uh, at Personio and especially if I think about it, we, I mean, we have all, I think, been through trouble times as HR managers in the last uh, years. Um, and you need a strong partner in change management. If I need to change a process for whatever reason, um, then I don't have time to, you know, to call someone who's, who's changing the system. I need to do customization myself. I need to be able to call my um, my partner and at the software and tell, you know, we have we are facing this challenge. Can the system help us with that? And uh, you know, this is um, important to us. So it's crucial that um, the system is kind of the partner in change management and also the partner for future development. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Alisa, uh, how about um, how about with you? What, what were your killer requirements for a new solution? I mean, there were a couple of things. As I said, we're pretty international companies. So for us, it was crucial that we have the, the tool in an ideal world in different languages, whereas I think most of us use it in, in English. And it was important for us that there are, uh, that we are able to display the different locations properly and the company structure. So our company set up. In addition to that, of course, we didn't have a recruitment tool. So this was a huge add-on and a huge support for me as I was managing everything by myself, of course, together with our uh, managers but this was a huge time saver. And um, yeah, it's, as Beat said, there is definitely, a, the tool should definitely be a, a partner in change management. And that's, that was also important for us. And it, the tool grows with the company. Yeah, makes sense. Um, what extent, this is more of a soft factor, but to what extent was company culture um, and cultural fit a factor in uh, making your decision? Mila, you already, um, I think you already answered this, but is there anything you'd like to add here? Yes. Uh, for Clickers, the culture is the most important. And we was looking for a tool uh, that uh, gives support to transmit our culture. In, in Clickers, we have three, three values, transparency, uh, complexity, um, and trust. Uh, with Personio, we we can do all the process more transparency for the employees. Uh, it's very intuitive. Sorry, um, it's very easy to use. And through uh, Personio, we can give a uh, truth to the to the employees because they they can. Uh, they have access to all their data. They can access uh, to all the, the process. Uh, and I think that uh, Personio have a big fit with our culture. It's for us, it's a, a fantastic tool uh, for transmit uh, our culture because we use the culture all the days uh, uh, with the clients, with the employees, with the providers uh, is is very very important for for clickers. Okay, so culture was was actually one of the one of the top criteria. Makes sense. Yes. Um, Lisa Beata, how about at your organizations? Was that more of a soft factor or more of a critical factor? 
It, it is definitely a factor uh, because, um, um, as I said, I implemented two systems at uh, IC Berlin. And when I did the first one, I was looking for a complete different tool, kind of, uh, especially in terms of cultural fit, because I was, first of all, I was new. <laughs> Um, so I didn't want to, you know, I didn't have an idea of how would the, uh, the, the employees take that, how would the organization react to something like this, because it was, you know, I was the new one implementing something completely new. And so I was looking for uh, easy to use, very playful, not too serious system. And, and that's how I made the decision um, as well to say, okay, I need, I need something that people can easy, easy relate to and don't think it's something you know they should be afraid of so that was my main attempt in the first uh, for the first time but then um i was also surprised that people were so happy and satisfied with having an hr tool and took it much more serious than i would have thought so i was looking for a system that is um that is more serious where we can find more data we can put we can add functions and and so um i think we have also kind of grown up as a company a little bit throughout the years um and um the system definitely reflects uh that and uh, lisa yeah for us culture was also uh, a big factor that we took into consideration as i said we're we couldn't we are a relatively young company we consider ourselves as tech driven and um, this of course played a huge role and we were looking for it for a tool that's easy to use, very, um, which has a nice interface and which fits our needs and our purpose. And so far, I haven't gotten any negative feedback from the team. So, and there were not many questions, which, which is also always a good sign if it's just, it, it just went along. Great. <laughs> um, Beata, coming back to a point you raised earlier, I, I, I just want to dig down a little bit deeper because it's such an important topic for, for European organizations. Um, GDPR and you know, to what extent, what are some of the challenges you were having and to what extent did that uh, also influence your decision for a new, for a new solution? That, um, I mean, we had a different system in place which uh, was an American system and you always have then questions about GDPR uh, issues and data security and where are the servers and um, when people don't trust the system because they think okay our data are not safe and they don't want anything else in the system so um, changing to a European supplier or European system just made my life a lot easier um, uh, it's I mean if even if you have discussions with the works council and, and and the employees it's you know you don't you don't have this worry or this fear uh, anymore about are my data safe because now you can say mm -hmm. I have a, a system that reflects European standards we don't need to worry about this so and this is kind of a relief because as an HR manager who uh, justify um, data security issues. You, you are, with the most sensitive data, you just don't want that. Great, thanks. Um, and Lisa, GDPR, did that play a role in your decision? Yeah, definitely. Um, we had similar issues in the past uh, where there were always questions around GDPR, is our data safe? Um, concerns that people didn't feel comfortable to share their bank details, for example, which I completely understand. And even though you assured everybody that that data is safe, there were still concerns and um, I understand it. So as we are just focused in the European market, it also made sense for us to, to switch to a tool where GDPR is no question at all or where GDPR is covered and everybody felt safe and secure and the funny thing is or the interesting thing is I realized is that people are now actually for example uploading profile pictures to the tool because in the past um, we our employees didn't feel comfortable to have their pictures in the old tool but in Personio now of course there are still some missing but the majority has a picture uploaded there. Hmm, nice it's, it's nice to see who you're working with especially <laughs> <laughs> when everyone's working remotely. That was a priority for me, but I mean, of course you can't force everybody, anybody. <laughs> right. 
Um, all right, thank you. Well, then let's talk about um, your, your implementation experience, because that's really important to choosing a new solution is one thing, but getting it live and, and managing change across the business, um, that's, that's also an important step. So how did you manage the, the implementation of Personio and, and change management, some, some best practices? I'll pick someone if I have to, but otherwise I'll just let someone start talking. You should pick someone. I should pick someone. Okay, I will do that. Um, Lisa, how about back to you? <laughs> okay, so yeah, the implementation process went very smooth for me, um, even though I had, I mean, as I said previously, we, we made the decision very fast. Uh, within one week, we decided, okay, we'll, we'll go from one tool to another. We had all this old data and um, yeah, I was worried mostly that this will take too much of my time and that it won't work out at all and that there will be data missing or that it will take, because I also had to take care of the day-to-day -day tasks like payroll or recruitment and whatever is there to come. So I was really, really surprised how smooth everything went. And I'm so grateful for the great implementation team at Personio. Um, I worried for nothing and it went very well. There were just some minor changes and minor adjustments after the implementation was completed. Um, but yeah. How long did it take? Um, I think it was somewhat around eight weeks. Um, and uh, how about at IC Berlin Data? Mm -hmm. The, for us, implementation was quite a challenge because the decision to get, uh, or ch uh, change to um, Personio was made in quarter four of 2019. So um, this, and then we started implementation uh, April uh, 2020. And as we all know, the situation has had changed dramatically. And um, so we started implementation right in the middle of the crisis. And um, um, first of all, um, we got all this quest these questions from employees council and the employees, why are you implementing something in the middle of the crisis? Does it cost money? How much does it cost? And, uh, you know, people got nervous and also, um, especially my colleague, um, uh, Alexandra, who did uh, the implementation with Personio um, uh, on the uh, daily basis, we were all in short time, everyone was working remotely and she had to deal with all these things. Uh, and so I would say it was the worst moment ever, but uh, it still, again, it took us six weeks. So it was just perfectly organized and were very well um, um, yeah, organized by the implementation partner we just had. And so um, we did it and we were happy that we did it. So just to, yes. to right, six weeks. Totally agree. That's the, in, in all locations, you were you were live in six weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We were yes. than I expected uh, actually, but um, yeah, I, mean, I think it was so important to do that because we had done our internal marketing already, and we had told everyone, and we were we had a bad situation in the company. Yes, and uh, you know it was difficult, but we still wanted to to bring it up as something very positive and. You know, saying in the middle of a crisis, good, still good things happen. You know, and so we we took this and wanted definitely wanted this to get out as fast as possible because, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean the remote working was much easier. Than we knew that before. Okay, makes sense. And Amelia, you wanted to add something to that? Yes. Um. Any chain or implementation implantation of a new software. Uh, requires an extra X4 and duplication of tags, but our PNO in Personio has helped a lot in, in the implementation, reducing almost by by half the average time uh, if, if the implementation on the tool. Uh, she provides us a lot of documentation. Uh, she participates with us in the in the training with managers and director and with employees. And if uh, we have any dude, uh, 
she always answer quickly and the support is marvelous because it's complex to launch and implement a, a, a tool, but the support was fantastic. Right, thank you. Um, I'm gonna come back to IC Berlin because uh, you've already mentioned GDPR. Uh, I was wondering if um, you, know, you had an American software in place before implementing Personio. I was wondering if there are any other advantages besides the obvious GDPR one uh, for implementing a, a European software. Yes. Um, yeah, there were many, um, I would say. Um, I mean, the data security on one side, but then uh, also reporting uh, requests we got from, you know, that's normal reporting we do and that re reflect like German or European law in Texas and social security and whatever. And we weren't able to do that uh, properly with an American system because they didn't have these function for us and they didn't plan to add something, you know, that reflects uh, reflects uh, the European market much better. So um, we still wanted to add the, for example, the, the topic uh, payroll and this wasn't possible because payroll does work in your uh, Europe than it does in, in the US and so and social security as well. So we had like several things that just weren't, we weren't able to do. It wasn't possible to do it with uh, the American software. And so um, changing was just for us a thing we needed to do to, to improve ourselves and our work and, uh, you know, not creating more spreadsheets than we should have done. Right. Just, just the spreadsheets that you should do. <laughs> Um, Mila, coming back to, you've already mentioned support, I think um, it sounds like for, for Clicar as local support and that high quality of support was very important. It, was there, were there any other advantages that you see from working with a European solution as opposed to yeah. solution from, from somewhere else? Yeah, uh, I agree uh, with Pete because my last tool uh, was American too. Uh, for me, it was very difficult to explain the different legal issues that the tool uh, has to contain because the, the legal is very different in, in both countries. Um, they offer me a very static uh, customization and sometimes uh, we have a lot of problems uh, to introduce some legal issues in, in the tool. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and uh, Lisa? Do you want to add anything to this? Um, I think from from switching the tools, uh, as I said, the it it, it fits our culture be better, um, as you can see from the pictures that, that are uploaded there. There, and it definitely um, the point on the and the payroll matters. That's also something that I realized. Um, the old tool wasn't able to support us here because it wasn't local, and now um, we have all these administrative tasks in one place, which saves the HR team a lot of time. Great, well, that's a perfect lead up to my next question. So I'll start with you, Lisa. Which tasks have become easier or, or faster since implementing Personio, for example, um, remote leading remote teams um, or, or whatever is relevant for your organization? Um, as I mentioned initially, uh, we had a lot of tools floating around. So now we have at least combined uh, three topics, whether it's administration, recruitment, or, or a payroll in one point, our access point. So this definitely saves us a lot of time. Um, whether it's uh, the preparation for payroll for the different locations in Europe. So we have these five locations, which means we have five different payroll providers, but we, we get all the reports out of Personio in one go. So this saves us a lot of time. At the same time, reporting is way easier also for, for recruitment purposes because you have an overview, you have the specific jobs, you can see, okay, how many people applied, how many people made it past the interview stage, how many offers did we send out and how long did it take us? Because previously I was simply not able to get any reports because it would just have taken all of my time because we just had an email inbox, which is also not very GDPR conform. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> um, Beata, how about at IC Berlin? What's, what's easier, faster, better? 
cooler. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And um, many things were said by, by Lisa already, I would say, especially the payroll. Um, uh, and the for me, myself, the reporting is just such a relief because, you know, um, if you get a report in one click, um, then everyone else in the company is even jealous. Uh, fully already, fully already. <laughs> it's marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> So I think uh, uh -huh. click uh -huh. <laughs> already all the things I would say that have been uh, become much more easy for us as well. Nice, nice. And yes. you know, anything to add to that? Yes, uh, I agree with my colleagues. Um, in the case of the employees that work remotely, it's more easy uh, to do feel them that they are in a company, for example, they mm -hmm. can find other uh, employees in person that they need uh, to contact with them. Uh, we publish all our policies and different communications. Um, well, I think that uh, the tool help us to manage the remote workers in, in in different issues, uh, of course, recruitment, hiring, but then we we can continue uh, up, apport value to them uh, with the process online. Uh, for example, uh, performance evaluation. It's very interesting uh, to have all the process in only one tool. Easy to understand. And, and and easy to use for all the employees. Great, thank you. That's a that's actually a great cultural point that it's not just about mm -hmm. the, you know, the support for various requirements, which is super important, but also um, the the solution is sort of a, a bonding agent that helps people see see who works here, <laughs> see people's faces because people are uploading yeah. pictures and, and make them feel like one company. That's a that's a great point. Um, a couple of wrap-up questions, and then we'll take some questions from the audience. Um, we're perfectly on time. So the first one is, what best practices would you share with another business looking for a new solution um, in terms of making a quality search and making a good decision for this, you know, for your organization? Um, Lisa, why don't we start with you? So again what i would i want would want to share with anybody who's looking for a tool figure out what you need and how you can combine tools i mean there is there is hardly ever a tool that fits all your needs but um as we have discussed already you need to make a wish list with the must-haves and with the nice to haves and um yeah I think that's the, that's the most important part you, you should focus on and give yourself enough time. <laughs> Even though it's great you, if you have quick decisions, um, it's better not to be that stressed. Even though the implementation went super well, give yourself enough time. <laughs> That, that is uh, great advice, um, not just for HR, but <laughs> for life. <laughs> um, and Beata, how about... How about you? What are some best practices that you'd like to leave the audience with? Yeah, I think, um, especially as an HR uh, department, it's really important to um, to think about the impact we are making for the whole company. And um, if you align the search of a tool to the company's overall goals and strategy, then it will become much easier to, to just make it a business case and discuss with uh, the management team or the decision maker you have, because um, HR can make the difference at that point. And you know, if you implement a great tool, then uh, you are also leading like change processes and um, setting some standards. And it's always easier if the management and the, the decision making um, um, people understand what's the benefits of a tool. And please uh, keep that in mind that whatever you do, it should be aligned to the company strategy and it makes the life much easier. Um, I was uh, always uh, talking also to the salespeople, to the, um, you know, to the development team to get an idea of where do we want to be as a company in a few years and what kind of tool would bring us there and what kind of tool would I have in, a, in some years still because it developed with us. So 
that's I think important to to align it to the ideas the company in general has. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, and Mila, best practices that you would care to share today? Uh, well, uh, in our case, I I think that uh, there are a lot, but <laughs> I think that uh, the most important is when you begin with the implementation of a tool is, is to have clear what are the process that are critical and what process is only a complement mm -hmm. uh, to put focus in the critical process because uh, we can do a lot of things, but we need uh, the key process and uh, well implemented in, in the tool. Okay, and last question from me before we uh, look at questions from the audience. What, if anything, would you do differently if you could go back and do it all again? Um, Mila, I'll start with you again. Oh, I, I have it very clear. <laughs> I, I choose the, the, the tool at the beginning of my history in the company because um, we have a lot of lack of data and more complex process. Uh, for me, I, I have three experience in, uh, with the implementation of, of different tools. And I think that we always are late. Uh, I think that is very strategic for the HR department uh, create the process, but don't forget and never, how do you go to use this process? In different tools in Excel, no, please. <laughs> no, please, uh, choose the, the best uh, HR tool that more uh, adapt to your company and, and go. <laughs> Um, great, thank you. And Lisa, what, if anything, would you do differently? Um, I think I just can highlight it again, as I said previously, I would give myself more time just to have a proper preparation, think about uh, the processes, how do you want to display them, which data do you need to provide, and when do you need to provide this data so that you already did your homework, <laughs> the prep work and then the implementation is, I mean, it wasn't stressful, but it is even more stressless than it was. Great. Okay, thanks. And um, Beata, would you do anything differently? Mm, no, nothing actually. All right, strong finish. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it in a crisis, but I, would, I wouldn't be able to change that. So I wouldn't do anything different. Okay. Great. All right. Well, thank you all. I'll just do a quick wrap up of our panel today. Just kind of summarize what we talked about. An HR solution has to be evaluated, not just once, but over time to make sure it's still meeting the needs of your business. Second, living with the solution that doesn't meet the needs of your solution can lead to um, persistent challenges. It can even lead to legal challenges. And finally, making a change at the right time with the right solution can not only save time and money, but it can also enable HR to work more strategically. 